As highlighted on this channel time and time again, the Street Fighter franchise has a long and storied history. Now 35 years into this fantastic series existence, anticipation is in the air as we head towards the release of Street Fighter 6. While this is the case, 25 years ago there was little in the way of fanfare for the release of the direct sequel to the most popular Street Fighter game of all time, Street Fighter 2. I am of course referring to Street Fighter 3, the entry of a series that went mostly underappreciated, due to a combination of factors that prevent it from selling very well. One of the many criticisms for the title at the time was that many players were not appreciative of what they deemed as an oddball roster of fighters, with Ken and Ryu being the only two who fans of the series were familiar with. Sure, Street Fighter 2 had the monstrous Blanca, but the being the only inhuman looking character, this just made him stand out more. However, this newer entry had all sorts of weirdos included, such as the bizarre Necro, the strange looking Oro, and of course the unsettling Gil. And these are just the odd characters who appeared in the game's first iteration. Keeping these oddities in mind, what if I told you today that initially the Street Fighter 3 roster was planned out to be even weirder with even stranger characters planned who were conceptualised to star in this balmy game? On November 4th 2022, the official Twitter account of Capcom's artwork team would tweet out some imagery revealing the polarising cult classic's earliest documented concept art. So, with this new documentation at our disposal, let's take a deep dive look at each member of this proposed roster and how they relate to the final Street Fighter 3 product and the greater Capcom fighting game universe as a whole. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Street Fighter 3 game we never got. Yeah! Akira Yasuda is a man we have mentioned a lot of times in the past on here, as that this gentleman nicknamed Akiman is responsible for many of the iconic character designs that can be found in Street Fighter 2 and beyond. The concept art we shall be looking at today is more of this creator's work, so let's look at the initial lineup that he had sketched that were originally intended to follow up on Dao Sim, Guile and Co. These documents reveal a lineup of 15 planned fighters, so let's attempt to break them down one by one. First up, we have an illustration of what appears to be a dinosaur. Applying Google Translate to the Japanese text that appears underneath the image reveals the word Velociraptor, showing us that early in its development, Street Fighter 3 was intended to include a fighting dinosaur. I have no idea how early in time these concepts were created, but as you likely know, Dinosaurs in the mid 90s would be a common occurrence in fighting games, which was likely due to the rise in popularity of Jurassic Park. Tekken 2 for example had Alex in 1995, and prior to that in 1994, Killer Instinct had Riptor, a human Velociraptor hybrid. So by the time of Street Fighter 3's 1997 release, this would have been far from a fresh concept. To try and breathe further life into these forgotten characters, my wife Lady Deke kindly colourised each of them for the video today. As for Street Fighter 3's Velociraptor, she opted for a colour scheme in line with Hauser, a fighting game character resembling a dinosaur who would appear in another Capcom System 3 game, Red Earth. Is there any connection between Hauser and this early Street Fighter 3 character? Perhaps, who knows for sure, as Dinosaur Fever was rampant throughout the period. Next up we have a very plain looking fighter dressed in street clothing, which I guess makes sense of a video game titled Street Fighter. The supporting Japanese text reveals this fighter to be a New York bully who uses an Aikido style in combat. Interestingly, they are also labelled in this illustration as Ryu an American insinuating that from the early stages they wanted to include a character in the game who was akin to Ryu but American in order to appeal to the US market. More hilariously, if you add a bit of colour to this image you instantly just get Cody from Final Fight, which raises the potential that during early stages of Street Fighter 3's development that they may have intended to revolve the franchise around Cody. This happened to be prior to the time he emerged as a selectable fighter in another Street Fighter game, Street Fighter Alpha 3 where he appeared wearing prison garb. 
As we now know, the idea of building Street Fighter 3 around an American fighter would culminate in the Hulk Hogan inspired Alex, but it is interesting to see the early ideas surrounding such a concept. Moving on, we have this hunk of a specimen. This muscled athlete has a fig leaf covering his groin and resembles that of an ancient Greek statue. The only text written underneath this fighter directly translates to Pancration Man. Pancration was a dangerous ancient sport that would be partaken in during the ancient Olympics. The word literally means all force and it was a combat sport that combined wrestling with boxing. Basically, you were allowed to do most things to your opponent with a few exceptions such as biting, gouging eyes or attacking your opponent's genitals. Looking at the design, it seems pretty obvious that Pancration Man would later evolve into Gil, with the design later likely being revisited again with the release of Street Fighter 3 Second Impact, with Gil's brother Urien having an even greater resemblance to this earlier concept. The sexy fig leaf was dropped entirely though, sadly. Fighter number 4 presents us to this hobo looking dude. This more mysterious looking fighter is labelled Tea Master. Japan is known for its tea ceremonies, which can sometimes be very formal and last up to 4 hours, and tea masters are basically to tea what a sommelier is to wine. Tea experts who can identify a tea's origin based on its aromas, mouthfeel, etc. This may sound like a really strange idea for a Street Fighter character, but there was a method to this forgotten madness. There is an ancient Japanese tale titled The Samurai and the Tea Master, featuring the story of a tea master who is challenged to fight to the death by a samurai. The tea master in the old text performs his duties peacefully, with the same concentration and focus as the samurai. Preparing for battle, the tea master trains the fencing master, who tells him, You have no need to learn anything of the way of death. Your state of mind when you perform the tea ceremony is all that is required. When you see your challenger tomorrow, imagine that you are about to serve tea for him. Salute him courteously, express regret that you could not meet him sooner, take off your coat and fold it as you did just now. Wrap your head in a silken scarf and do it with the same serenity as you dress for the tea ritual. Draw your sword and hold it high above your head, then close your eyes and ready yourself for combat. This is exactly what the Tea Master does in the towel, turning up for the fight present in mind and ready for battle. In response, the samurai becomes terrified, assuming he has fallen victim to some sort of deception or trickery. Fearing for his life, the samurai apologises for his behaviours and retreats. Reading up on this old story, it suddenly makes the block of Japanese text written above this character actually make sense as it describes that when the Tea Master gets fired up in combat, his opponent's knees will begin to shake, preventing them from even being able to stand. To be fair, this sounds like an awesome concept for a unique Street Fighter character, making it a shame that the Tea Master was dropped completely. Maybe we need to start hounding Capcom to include him as DLC in Street Fighter 6 or something. Further to the Tea Master, we would also get a ninja looking fighter with a translated text labelling him as Watchover, suggesting that he or she watches over someone or something. Back in 1987, Street Fighter had a ninja named Geki, who fights for Talon Shryukens and Ninjutsu Illusions. Red Earth would receive one in the form of Kenji, one of the four main characters who were selectable to be played as in the game. As for Street Fighter 3's ninja, it seems they would evolve greatly in design from the early concept art, eventually resulting in Ibuki, a teen girl ninja. The final design for Ibuki by Akiman and Kini Nishimura is said to have been partially inspired by Lin Kurosawa from Capcom's Alien vs Predator game, all in all making the final design far more memorable than the generic looking watchover. Next up we have this large muscular looking fellow who is wearing distinctly Arabian looking shoes. Translating his Japanese name directly to English reveals the name Demon of Islam. While evil spirits are mentioned in Islamic text, the design here certainly doesn't represent what is described, so this indicates that directly translating using Google is not entirely appropriate. This character instead looks to be representing a jinn a usually invisible creature from early pre-Islamic Arabian religious systems and later Islamic mythology and theology. Jinns are neither innately evil nor innately good. Islam denies all affinities between the jinn and God, 
thus placing the jinn parallel to humans, making them also subject to God's judgement and the afterlife. These entities are more often anglicised as genies, but unfortunately this genie character was dropped from the Street Fighter lineup altogether. For a random tangent though, about a decade ago I had a paranormal experience whereby I witnessed what most people would only be able to describe as a g-g-g-ghost. But a Muslim friend of mine assured me it was likely just a jinn. I must admit I am still pissed off about this happening to me, as the bastard spooked me and didn't even bother granting me any wishes. What a letdown. The game was also intended to include a character labelled Rollerblade who very much looked like in the imagery they would have fought against opponents wearing roller blades. Previously, we had seen Skate in Streets of Rage 2 in combat, fighting wearing skates as well as later see an area in Street Fighter EX2 fighting wearing similar apparel. This may be the first documented sketch of a character for the Street Fighter franchise who was drawn up to include such a feature. It's not the skates though that make this character's design most interesting to me, but more the fact that they have a striking similarity to Slam Master 2's character Black Widow, in terms of both physique and the apparel they are wearing. This wrestler has a lean but muscular frame and wears a full body costume, fooling opponents with their flexibility. The fighter in Capcom's wrestling game appears androgynous and advertisements purposely use neutral Japanese pronouns to leave it up in the air whether or not the character was male or female, with the character's ending revealing that she is actually a woman. It is speculated that she is modelled after Japanese female wrestler Mariki Yoshida, but there are certainly a lot of similarities between Slam Master's character and this early Street Fighter 3 design. Are they one of the same? Let me know what you think in the comment section. Next I would like to draw two conceptualised fighters to your attention. This one labelled Poison Hand Man and this guy labelled Tarogo. Both of these designs have similarities with that of Fang, the Shadaloo operative who would later appear as a villain within Street Fighter V. M. Bison, second in command, is a very thin, tall man, with him having fingernails that are fashioned into sharp claws like Vega, with them being coated completely in poison. This poison can melt anything with a touch. It is interesting to learn that ideas for his conception date as early as the mid-90s. The game also has a character planned who is labelled Businessman, who hilariously looks exactly how his name suggests. While I cannot recall a nerdy looking businessman appearing as a selectable fighter in any other Street Fighter games, a character with a design of this style was instead used within the video game Rival Schools a game that features various characters who have appeared in Street Fighter and other Capcom fighters. Businessman has a resemblance to Hideo Shimazu, a Japanese language teacher from Justice High. It's an amusing design that looks out of place in a fighting game due to the juxtapositioning, but the result is hilarious in my opinion. The design documents would also show off a character labelled Street Dancer, which is showing him spinning on his head, with text reading that he is using the legendary martial art known as Caparera with the fighter having an entire move set of upside down moves. While Street Fighter 3 would not receive a character with a design that looks anything like this, the concept seems to have evolved into Elena, a capoeira practitioner from Kenya. So it is interesting to see how some of the early ideas were fleshed out and changed over time. One of the most imposing and out there of all of these old balmy designs is an image of a terrifying beast labelled Martin. With this concept art surfacing for the first time last week, a number of internet users noted that this character looked identical in its early stages to that of another. It seems that Akiman intended to have a fighter based on the character from the manga known as Beo. One issue features a mutated mandrill known as Martin, whose body has been modified extensively, turning him into a fighting machine. He has a deadly set of teeth and even spikes hidden in his fur, which he is capable of throwing at opponents. Further to this, a harpoon gun is located in his mouth and he can release poison gas from his stomach that weakens his foes. It is not surprising that Aki Man seems to have been a fan of this sadistic beast, but would he have been a good fit for Street Fighter? I'll leave that one for you to decide in the comment section. Another planned fighter would be this guy who is simply labelled Assassin, with the two images of this turban wearing character looking like he can distort his appearance in combat creating a ghostly illusion whereby he can confuse opponents by duplicating images of his fists. Out of all of the roster members, this is the one I am drawing blanks on with regards to the source inspiration, 
So if you know what this fighter represents, let me know and I'll pin it in the comments. We also have an imposing mechanical looking fighter labelled Marionette Master, aka Puppet Master. Capcom's Dark Stalkers series would end up introducing a character who is very similar looking to the design to this one, coming in the form of Witzil. Witzil is from an army of identical giant robots who were constructed 65 million years ago and were responsible for wiping out the dinosaurs. Which means that if this robot from Darkstalkers is the same one who was intended for Street Fighter 3, then a rivalry with Velociraptor would have made a ton of sense. Gil, Pancration Man, or whoever this game's conceptual villain was intended to be, could have revived the robot and brought it to present day, just as Pyron did within Darkstalkers plot. Lastly, we have a cane carrying, monocle wearing character who looks like a mad scientist who is simply labelled Doctor. While we did get a lab style stage whereby you faced off against some of the Illuminati's experiments in the final game, there is no crazy looking Doctor present. But it appears likely that this character could have been partly behind such experiments. It makes you also wonder whether the intention was for this Doctor to potentially serve as a main villain in the plot, or whether he was originally intended to feature as the game's main villain himself. What is highly interesting is that recent leaks have revealed that the main villain who will be appearing in Street Fighter 6 is also an older gentleman who wears a monocle and carries a cane, known as JP. On the Street Writer Podcast, it is speculated that JP is based on Jean Piermont Morgan, an old tycoon and investment banker who got so rich and powerful that economists feared he owned his country. At this stage, though, thoughts about the JP character and Morgan are purely speculation, but it is interesting to note that at least a couple of similarities between him and this mysterious dropped Street Fighter 3 character, such as the cane, the monocle, and the elderliness. My personal favourite out of this lot is certainly the Team Master, who I am incredibly disappointed didn't make the final cut. It is bizarre to see how different Street Fighter 3 characters could have been if the creators chose to stick with some of the early directions. Things could have been even weirder than the final product we actually got. So with my favourite scrapped character becoming the Team Master, who, speaking of team masters, could very well have convolutedly ended up becoming Dudley over time, I would be curious to know which of these early designs you found the most interesting. Share your thoughts, comment down below and subscribe and watch my video right now on Street Fighter 2 18 Persons, a bizarre edition of a game few people have played.